So we discussed Bernard Laporte and uh, Bill Beaumont's proposals last week involving scrapping the Champions Cup and, and having a World Club Cup every year. And this week, Augustine Pichot has decided he wants to challenge them and run to become World Rugby Chairman. What do you guys, first of all, make of his chances and some of the things he's been saying about giving the Tier 2 nations more voice, for example? Love it. But I love that he's throwing a cat amongst the pigeons, as it were. Get it? Well done, Jim. You throw the cat in there, then the pigeons fly away. But the pigeons haven't flown away because they're standing their ground. Look, I, I really like Bill Beaumont. I do. I love what he's done for the game. But I think, you know, Pichot is a lot closer, I would say, to the modern game. He said it himself. We are from different generations and we have different philosophies, quotes. See, I've done my homework because I have got bloody time to do my homework. <laughs> so, you know, I like Pichot and I think the game needs freshening up. This isn't me being detrimental to world rugby. They've done a good job um, and it's always hard. So you look at all the other sports and stuff like that. The highest governing body always comes under scrutiny. And world rugby is the same because that's the, the world that we live in. That's what we love to do. Augusto Pichot's come out there now and he's... He's, as he said, I just read the quote that he said, like, he, you know, he's got different philosophies to Bill Beaumont. He's obviously the vice chairman at the minute and he's thrown his, um, his hat. I'm sure it's a cool hat. He's Argentinian uh, into the ring and he wants to freshen up the game. And he's talking about making it. Well, everyone's talking about making it a global season and trying to get a positive out of the negative that we're in now in terms of the game stopping and trying to formalize something different. And. There's a lot of people out there, Dan Leo, we've had him on the podcast before, who are fighting for the Pacific Islander teams that have been grossly underfunded, that don't get the exposure, uh, to try and find a way to bring these teams, integrate these teams into Tier 1 rugby to grow the game worldwide. Why? Why? And we've seen what's happened with the USA rugby as well, that they're going under. USA rugby were meant to be the next big team. You know what I mean? They were meant to be the, the, you know, the team that in eight, 12 years' time would be competing for the World Cups because of the athletes that they've got and they've gone under. So the game in that sense, that side of things, the political side of it, I think is uh, we're miles behind. Any other organisation, you know, Olympics, I don't really like the Olympics because, because of all the underlying uh, stuff that goes with that. Football, you know, UFC, boxing, you look at, and everyone's got their problems like they have. But I just think we are a very old-fashioned sport still, which is good because that gives us the values that we like and we, and we like that side of the game. And there's always going to be a part of that. But, you know, what's, what's Pichu? He's 40-odd, mid-40s. I just think we need someone a little bit younger, a little bit fresher with some different ideas because at the minute, I don't personally think when I look at it all, it's working. But there are question marks around it is, again, speaking to the Oracle Tom at Rugby Pass, is... You know, you, logistically, how do you do that? Like, you throw in the the, the Jaguars into the, the the super into the super team. What are you laughing at? The Jaguars. The Jaguars. It's either the Jag. It's either the Jaguars or the Haguares. I tell you what we'll do. I tell you what we'll do. We'll call them the Jags. You throw the Jags into the mix, and and, and you throw the um, you, you throw the Japanese franchises in as well. Is mate the travel. Are you, are you organising travel between these teams and stuff? So I don't know. So there's a few ideas out there. What happens here? Does it go to a public vote? I think we should have them on the podcast and they can maybe like, they can put it to the millions of why mm. they should be voted in. Who votes for the men? Does anyone know? Is it, it, well, I do, I do know. Um, and it's a good point actually, Jim, because perhaps people don't know, but each uh, rugby council around the world, so uh, obviously every country that's a participant gets a certain number of votes. So England get three votes. Uh, a lot of the tier one nations, New Zealand, Australia, they get three votes each uh, as to who they want. Uh, and it last time they went for this, uh, Bill Beaumont was the only person that put his name uh, forward to uh, be the chairman. And he had Pichot as his vice chairman. That right, vice, he was vice chairman, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was uncontested. It was just those two. They were the only people that put themselves forward. So uh, this year's interesting. Um, and I can't work out whether it's a really good time to have it or a really bad time to have it because everyone's saying that we need to press the reset button and, and, and find a way forward collectively across the world to align everything. Um, and coronavirus and the pandemic that we're going through now has allowed us a lot of time to think about how we could move things forward. But some people have come out with some crazy ideas. We said it last week, didn't we, about the, the World Club Cup. We didn't like it. We're traditionalists. But you do have to move with the times. Um, the vote is each... 
each council will, will, will get their votes uh, and then it's first past the post. Whoever gets the most votes wins. And I think there's, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of Pichot, big fan of Bill Beaumont in terms of what they've done. Um, Pichot has said a few things. He put some tweets out during the World Cup, didn't he, about uh, the amount of players that were born and bred uh, in the countries that he played with. It I don't think went down particularly well. Um, it turns out that the actual winners of the World Cup had all their players born in that country. Um, so, um, you know, there was a percentage for each one, wasn't there? Um, and and uh, he does ruffle feathers and, and maybe that's what we need. But maybe we are a little bit archaic um, as, a, as a sport and the people at the top end of the game that are making these decisions, are they radical enough to follow his lead and, and, and have someone ruffle the feathers? Or are they going to stick with the safe and... The, the sort of wiser statesman in Bill Beaumont and Bernard the Port, Bernard the Door, Bernard the Door, Bernard the Door, the Door, the Door, Laporte. He does come across as the kind of guy that is going to fight for the smaller nations, doesn't he? And that might not sit so well with the bigger nations. Well, this is, you know, you know what's really interesting about that point, right? So, Sky Sports New Zealand did an interview um, on the breakdown show. And the, the kind of tweet around it that, you, that I've seen anyway that's been retweeted, I'm going to tell you who it's retweeted by. The, the question is, is should the Pacific, Asia and the Americans uh, be included in the rugby championship? Question mark. And then Gus Pichot goes on there and talks about it. So you know what his answer is going to be. Of course, that's what he thinks. And the All Blacks have retweeted it, which I thought was really interesting that the All Blacks are getting behind someone like Pichot. Yes, he's the vice chairman, but you just mentioned that he is quite active on Twitter. He's quite outspoken and he's throwing a cat amongst the pigeons. Um, are there pigeons in New Zealand? Of course there are, aren't there? Yeah, there are. Yeah, yeah, there are. Yeah, yeah, New Zealand pigeons. It's cats they look as well. the same? They look exactly the same, yeah. Of course there's yeah, cats, man. mate. Andy, Andy Rose, the, uh, the ultimate cat food eater, aren't you, pal? That's it. That's it. It was, it was really weird, right? Well, I went back to Coventry and Coventry's got loads of pigeons uh, around the Lady Godiva statue. And I sat there and reminiscing by the old day. This is before lockdown, obviously, because I'm not allowed out. Uh, and I was thinking, if you were a pigeon, where would you want to live? Not Coventry. Would you? You wouldn't want to live in Cobb, would you? If you were a pigeon, what's wrong with Cobb? Like, a pigeon. Fuck this! I ain't living in Cobb. <laughs> Just ain't. What a shit place to live if you're a pigeon. Why? Just this. Where would you live if you're a pigeon? New Zealand. That's my point. That's the point. Do you not get? That's the point of the. That's the point of what I'm saying. Right. Got you. I'd rather be a New Zealand pigeon. Thanks for that, James. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's thanks. Okay. That. Highbrow yeah, again. It's okay. it's okay. Very highbrow. Highbrow. Uh, yeah, so I, I thought it was very interesting that the All Blacks actually retweeted that because it's very rare that you see like an England rugby or a Scotland rugby interacting with media in that in that way. But hey, it's in hey, it's unprecedented times. I fucking love that word. Unprecedented. It's, it's interesting though, isn't it? With P Show, he's not scared to ruffle the feathers and throw the odd tweet out. Does I'm just wondering whether he needs a running mate. Whether he needs, you know, who who would be his vice? I mean, who I don't would be mind his vice captain? Things, yeah, who I don't, vice captain? He's vice chairman. I don't mind saying things on Twitter. So, um, yeah, Augustin Pichot, if you want me, I'm here. <laughs>